Coming up on Network Africa. The High Court in Sierra Leone allows former President Ernest Bai Karoma to go abroad for medical care. The United Nations appeals for urgent funding to battle drought in Ethiopia. Plus, a nighttime curfew declared in Comoros amid post-election unrest. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Layo Olarinde. A high court in Sierra Leone has granted permission to former President Ernest Bai Koroma to travel abroad on medical grounds despite facing treason charges. The 70-year-old was charged early this month with four offenses for his alleged role in a failed military coup in November. Before adjourning the case to March the 6th, the High Court magistrate said the ex-president, who has been under house arrest, will be allowed to travel to Nigeria for no more than three months. Well, according to the West Africa's main regional bloc, ECOWAS, Nigeria had previously offered to allow him to enter on a temporary basis, which he accepted. However, some diplomats in the country say Mr. Karoma might not return from Nigeria after traveling there and that the court order in effect allows him to go into exile as a way of restoring calm to the country. Let's get more on this story. Joining us now is Lawrence Williams, the editor at Freetong Post newspaper in Freetown. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on the program. Yeah, it's always a pleasure having me. Well, now that the former president has been allowed by the High Court to travel, when is he expected to leave? I remember the last time we spoke, you know, he was under house arrest, but now the High Court has said he can leave his house and even travel abroad. Well, of course, um, the High Court yesterday gave a vision um, of the bail conditions under which the former president was being placed and um, allowing, allowing him to travel out of the jurisdiction to Nigeria on medical grounds. As of late this afternoon, and, um, the lead attorney for the former president has refused to comment on uh, exactly uh, what time or what day the former president will be leaving the shores of Sierra Leone and when he is also expected uh, back in the country to continue uh, um, his appearance before the court on treason charges. Equally so, the, the government's communications have not put out any official statement as to um, when the former president will be leaving the shores of Sierra Leone. However, and um, with regards to his medical conditions, there have been, um, and of course, particularly relating to um, the variation of the court order, uh, which allows him to travel out of the country. Um, there have been several um, arguments on social media, um, some coming from pro-government activists, or if you like, call them supporters and uh, members of the SLDP, and um, some others coming from the opposition APC. Uh, um, most of the videos I've seen and watched uh, videos or audios that are accusing the current regime of His Excellency Julius Madabio of betrayal. Um, in fact, one of um, the APC's staunch member, Dr. Sylvia Blyden, uh, who um, was, in fact, a special executive assistant to the former president during his reign in office and was also made Minister of Social Welfare. Um, it's against um, or has expressed an opinion um, stating that uh, it's, a, it's an act of detail on the part of the, the government to allow the former president to travel out of the country. Well, the High Court is, you know, saying that this permission is being granted on medical grounds. What can you tell us about the state of Mr. Karoma's health? Well, so far as we know from um, what um, from the medical report um, by his um, um, doctor, um, that is Dr. James B. W. S. L. has been um, with President Kuma for the last 20 years. He wrote that um, the former president is um, suffering from uh, diabetes mellitus. 
and um, other forms of um, heart conditions. And of course, diabetes mellitus is a disorder in which um, the body does not produce enough or respond normally to insulin, causing blood sugar levels to be abnormally high. And of course, um, um, another condition which relates to an imbalance of lipids in uh, such as cholesterol in the system. And there are some other um, uh, implications or heart conditions which he has been suffering from for the last 12 years, as indicated in the med medical report, which was presented to the High Court um, yesterday. And um, right. so these are all conditions which the former president is going through and is expected to seek proper medical attention out of the country. However, and during his reign in office, uh, he was actually accustomed to going to Germany and other th uh, first world nations for medical treatment. So it's rather surprising, as many people have opined, that the former president could be allowed to specifically go to Nigeria for medical treatment. All right. And while we wait uh, to see how, you know, that travel goes on, uh, talk to us about how the government is responding to the high court ruling. I mean, are there fears that Mr. Karoma might not return, you know, being that he is, uh, he's, he's been charged with treason and he's facing treason charges in the country? Well, we all know that um, the regional bloc ECOWAS has been advocating for the release of um, uh, President Kouma and um, also for the government of Sierra to drop all charges against him and ensures that uh, he has his benefits, uh, um, which is accorded to um, retired president. And um, so the court ruling you know, or the variation of the court order, which now allows him to travel out of the jurisdiction, according to the Minister of Information and Civic Education, Chen Oba, he says that uh, the government has just followed the rule of law, nothing more, nothing less. And um, there are, of course, there are arguments as to whether he will return. Uh, but of course, the matter before the magistrate court and um, has been adjourned to the 6th of March, which simply means going by the court um, adjournment date, um, Mr. Koma is supposed or expected to be here before the 6th to attend the hearing in person. All right, then we'll wait and see how it all pans out. But in the meantime, thank you, Lawrence Williams, the editor at Free Tongue Post newspaper. Thank you. Thank you. The United Nations Humanitarian Agency says it is concerned by the worsening drought in Ethiopia and needs more funds to step up its response. According to the UN's Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, the drought has impacted 4 million people in the conflict-ridden Amhara and Oromia regions, as well as Afar and Tigray. Well, Stefan Dujaric, spokesperson for the Secretary General, adds that multiple crises have severely weakened people's ability to cope with climate shocks such as drought. The federal government in Addis Ababa had previously allayed fears of a looming farming in the country and said it is working to provide aid. Well, this week, Tigray authorities revealed that more than 200 people had starved to death while warning last month that the region was on the verge of a humanitarian catastrophe. Uh, the Office of the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs is concerned about the deterioration of the humanitarian situation in the north of the country in drought-affected area regions, uh, including Afar, Amhara, Tigray, and Oromia. Multiple and often overlapping crises have severely weakened people's ability to cope with climate shocks such as drought. That leaves millions of people vulnerable to falling even further into severe need and destitution. We, along with our partners, are supporting the government in its efforts with extremely limited funding in a very challenging operating environment, particularly amid active hostilities in Amhara and Oromia. However, our humanitarian colleagues stress the need to scale up the response to support 4 million people in these regions with food, aid, nutrition, water, and sanitation, as well as health services. They tell us that the main issue is lack of funding and insecurity. 
Last year, between January and November, we and our humanitarian partners reached more than 12 million people with aid. The 2023 $4 billion humanitarian response plan for Ethiopia was just one-third funded, receiving only $1.33 billion. Uh, the 2024 appeal should be uh, shared shortly. The government of the Comoros Islands has ordered an overnight curfew after the police and military clashed with demonstrators protesting President Azali Asumani's re-election. Well, police also arrested an unspecified number of protesters, accusing them of disturbing public order. Opposition parties alleging fraud took to the streets of the capital, burning tires and barricading roads as they called for the poll to be declared void. Protests were also reported in other towns across the Indian Ocean archipelago. The UN is now appealing for restraints in the country. And Ugandan security forces have barricaded the homes of prominent opposition politicians ahead of a planned protest in the capital Kampala. Both veteran opposition leader Kiza Besigye and Bobby Wine, a former pop star also known as Robert Kiagulayi, says the security forces surrounded their homes, preventing them from leaving. They both posted on their X platforms. All well, the two government critics have a Asked the, have asked Ugandan citizens to go ahead with the planned protest to demand that the government fix the bad roads in the country. Oh, police have vowed to block the demonstrations, saying the protests organized by the politicians have never been peaceful and will disrupt a key summit that's underway in the capital. About 4,000 delegates are attending the 19th non-aligned movement summit in Kampala. Or well, speaking at the 19th non-aligned movement NAM summit, Vice President of Uganda Jessica Alupo says NAM is interested in continuing the development of cooperation between member states. She adds that from the political and diplomatic front to the social and economic, there are many existing new and emerging issues that challenge individual and collective efforts towards building prosperous and resilient societies of conflicts in various parts of the world, including on our own continent, Africa, sets back our development goals and reverses our respect and practice of human rights. Well, you were just watching the South African Minister of State for Foreign Affairs, Naledi Panda, that's urging our United Nations countries to respect international human rights law in order to protect Palestinian citizens uh, amid the Israel-Hamas war. She said this on the sidelines of the 19th Non-Aligned Movement Summit. Terrible, terrible slaughter that is underway uh, in Gaza. And despite, you know, a whole host of promised protections of the civilian population that is innocent of the harm uh, that was done by Hamas. Uh, people are unprotected, the innocent are being killed, women and children, public institutions that should provide support and help are just being decimated. And we felt as a country and as a signatory to a range uh, of international uh, uh, conventions that it's time we make conventions work for the good of ordinary people and that we could not idly, as a member state of the UN, uh, sit by and watch this as though it's a film um, that we needed to step up and uh, draw to the world's attention uh, that a genocide is underway in our view. These are countries that call on all of us to observe democracy, to respect international uh, human rights law, uh, to respect all the frameworks that govern uh, uh, global uh, institutions. So it is them, in fact, who should be upholding a convention such as the Convention uh, on the Punishment uh, of the Crime of Genocide. Still to come on the program, Zambia begins cholera treatment after receiving vaccines from the World Health Organization. More details after the break. Please join us again. Welcome back to the program. We continue in Zambia. 
the country has started administering oral cholera vaccines. Authorities rolled out some doses in Matero Township, Lusaka, one of the most affected areas on Tuesday. Well, 363 people have died so far in the countrywide cholera outbreak, 30% of whom are children under the age of five. Another 9,500 people are currently sick with the disease. Well, the outbreak, which started in early October, has spread to most parts of the country, but the largest number of recorded cases are in the capital city of Lusaka. It has prompted the government to postpone school resumption as the country battles the deadly waterborne disease. A new species of mosquito is driving up malaria infections in Africa, fueling a growing public health concern. And this is according to the World Health Organization. The Anopheles stevensi mosquito, shortened by some entomologists to Steve, has been detected in seven African countries so far. The mosquito, which originated in South Asia, was detected in Djibouti in 2012. Well, since then, malaria rates in the country have grown exponentially. The new species has spread to Ethiopia, Kenya, Nigeria and Ghana. Unlike other mosquitoes that breed in rivers and swamps, Steve is known to be an urban breeder that thrives in dry areas. It only needs a bit of moisture, like water trapped in containers, tires and gutters, to survive. The species also bites outdoors during the day and is immune to commonly used pesticides. Mozambican authorities are concerned about a strange disease which has killed more than 900 cattle in the country's central region since December. The disease, which is unknown to breeders and veterinary authorities, broke out in the province of Manica on the border with Zimbabwe and has spread to three of the province's districts. Concerned breeders are asking for an urgent response from veterinary author authorities to prevent further losses amid fears that the disease could spread. Breeders observe that the disease is characterized by a loss of appetite and strength in the animals. Provincial livestock authorities have taken blood samples from sick animals for analysis. Well, experts are highlighting the role of agriculture in climate action in the face of rising global temperatures. Well, this comes as 2023 was confirmed to be the warmest year on record. While agri-food systems contribute to about one-third of greenhouse gas emissions, some experts, including Director of the Office of Climate Change at the FAO, Kaveh Zahedi, believe they also hold a huge potential for positive climate action. In December, nations struck a historic deal at the COP28 climate summit in Dubai to transition the global economy away from fossil fuels. The summit's declaration on agriculture, food and climate received endorsements from 137 countries with $3.5 billion announced to replenish the Green Climate Fund. We mustn't become numb to these records after records toppling because they have implications implications in terms of increased uh, frequency of extreme weather events, uh, implications in terms of more forest fires, in terms of droughts, floods, etc. And all of these are impacting people, impacting people, especially those on the front lines like the agricultural community. So these records matter. Now, we need to react to it. Uh, we can't just be sort of passive observers of a, of a changing climate, and agriculture has a central role to play. These are solutions that agriculture and food systems can offer that can, yes, help to reduce greenhouse gas emissions at the same time as building resilience and improving adaptation capabilities at the same time as addressing food security challenges. We know still that over 700 million people are food insecure. Farms don't just have to be producers of food, they can be generators of renewable energy. Energy can then, that can then be used on the farm for the greenhouses, for pumping water, for irrigation, or energy that can be shared into the grid. Or better using agricultural waste, turning it into fuels, into biofuels. All of these are really energy smart agriculture solutions and that's exactly the kind of work that we've been doing with countries. 
The Nigerian student in the capital of the UAE, Abu Dhabi, is becoming a star on the rise as his unplanned musical career is placing him on stage across major emirates in the country. 19-year-old uh, Smith says he owes his newfound stardom to rigorous education and now plans to take bolder steps towards establishing his presence in the Middle East. Our correspondent Mayawa Adegoke has more on this. Soul music is paving a way for 19-year-old Abu Dhabi-based Nigerian singer Jire Smith, whose songs in recent months have been amassing digital plays and getting recognition, including Apple Music's Up Next for the Middle East. The music I do is soul music, R&B music. Um, it is sad music, as people will call it. <laughs> it's, for Nigerian music, it's a sad music, that's the fact. Um, but I think of it as introspective music that is a lot more than how the beat makes you feel. Jire's journey in the Middle East began after receiving a full scholarship to attend the New York University Abu Dhabi, a moment he says marked a turning point in his life. The first thing I saw was a scholarship letter, not even the acceptance letter. I just saw like, Attached is your financial aid package for 2021 to 2022. I was losing my mind. And I opened it and I showed my dad. And he's like, okay, tuition covered, food covered, transportation covered, like flight tickets, everything. He was like, is this real? Like, is this real? Are they going to like go back on their word? I was like, no, they can't go back on their, their word. This is it. And that day was like probably the beginning of what felt like the turning point of my life and was through education, quite literally. Like, whatever I'm doing now just started out through very, very rigorous education. His original plan was to study political science and become a diplomat in the future. However, that changed to music, as his musical talent, which was first discovered in Loyola Jesuit College, Abuja, found expression again on the university campus. His first performance at an open mic night paved the way for a professional music career. I met a lady called Farah Bushnak. She is the programming director of Manara Tulsadiyat. And she posted this Instagram story of me singing a video. And it was like, so many people now saw it because I think she like, is in her lane, she knows people that do those kind of stuff, so people were following me and it, w it felt like the start of, oh, in this place, people care about somebody singing and singing well and just making people feel like they're here to have a good time. And so I started doing that event every month and every month new people would like follow me, would say, oh, you sound nice, like you should release this song. So I started like thinking, yeah, I should release this song. So that first year was just through going to open mic events and then feeling like I can contribute to this community and myself by just doing this supposedly basic thing of singing and writing songs. His first ever released song, Down Your Knees, with some digital streams and a $14 payout, led him to his official debut track, Boss 170, with over 60,000 streams on Spotify and a Fresh Finds playlist mention as well as being named on Apple Music's Viral Hits playlist. In November, I was... Apple Music has a feature called Up Next Artist and they highlight an artist as the Up Next Artist for that region. And I was... In November, the up next artist for the Middle East, and I'm Nigerian. And people like we think, how is this possible? But it's not based on your nationality. It's just based on where you are operating from. And for me, it's that. This, I I will try to not say this in such a general way, but I do think Nigerians, because of our experience and why we have left our country, our desire to achieve what we set out to is a lot higher than the average person that doesn't have that same reason for leaving their country. So for me, being highlighted as an up next artist in a region where I'm not from, and there are many other artists operating there, I don't find it 
very surprising because there is tangible reason why that is the case. It's not just because they're trying to do this for like fun's sake. So it, is, it feels weird, but it's also a reminder that I'm doing things that I have worked for and whatever I'm achieving is because I've worked for it and because like there is proof in some sense, yeah. Where are my days off? I'm working, working to set me free. Among his many inspirations are legendary singer Asha, Kobam Zasuko, and his late mother, who passed away after battling cancer. He dedicates his song, She Goes, to her. As his influence grows in the region, Jire, now in his third year as a fully funded student studying music, plans to strategically find more revenue generating opportunities as he continues to create music from his soul. From Dubai in the United Arab Emirates, Maya Wadigoki for Channels Television Entertainment. And that's it on the program today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Layo Olandi.